Okay, guys, uh, looking into the last part of our guesses, uh, this is the entropy of, of guesses. Uh, it is not like uh, there is something new there. No, there is nothing new at all. We are still having the same properties of our gas, the same processes, the same laws, the same everything, just the calculation, name it. But only that we want to talk about the change in entropy. So the change in entropy, we are simply talking about, that is the entropy is the thermodynamic property. It's just a, a thermodynamic property of a fluid that remains constant during a reversible adiabatic process. During what? A reversible adiabatic process. So what are they going to ask you about that? They are going to ask you about the change in entropy. The change in entropy, uh, the entropy is just opposing like those PV diagrams. I'm not going to dwell much into that, guys. We just want to focus. How do they ask these questions? Yes, you can know your diagrams, which is fine. So it follows that the change in entropy, which is simply S1 minus S2, or we can adjust have it this way. Uh, the change in entropy is given. Uh, that's the formula that I want you to have. Uh, that is S2 minus S1, not S1 minus S2, but S2 minus S1. So this is equivalent to the mass into, so we're going to multiply uh, to the specific heat capacity at constant volume. Uh, that is lean T2 over T1 uh, plus R into lean V2 over V1. That is what you're going to need there. So this is measured in kilojoules per kilogram, per kilogram. That is our change in entropy. So you need the mass of the gas, the specific heat capacity at constant volume, the temperatures, the volumes, and the gas constant. With these, you are able to calculate it. You are able to calculate it. So, so in this case, uh, how are we going to calculate? That is the question. We just need the formula and the information that you are given. So let us check uh, on our information. What are we given? In this case, we are given, calculate the change of entropy when given a mass of 1,34 kilograms. So there we are given the mass of the gas, which is 1,4 kilograms of a gas is compressed from P1, 103,4 uh, kilopascal to, that is the second pressure that we have, which is 1,300, uh, 1,034 kilopascal during the law, uh, according to this law, PV to the exponent of, that is uh, a polytropic. And in that case, we are given N, which is 1,2. So N is 1,2. The original temperature, 15. So if we add 273 uh, to 15, that will be 288. So T1 original, that's 288 uh, Kelvin. What else CP uh, and also CV, we are given uh, these values. Uh, CP uh, at constant pressure, 0.88 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and also CV at constant volume, we are given uh, that will be 0 0.63 uh, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, just like that. This is our information and we are supposed to calculate. So this is how you're gonna do all the questions. You list your information, then you calculate what is not there using those laws. Remember all the laws we are talking about uh, uh, the law there, PV to the exponent of N is equal, which means a, a polytropic, anything that you know there. That will enable you to calculate what is not there. Are we having the mass? Yes, we've got the mass. CV, we have our CV. T2, we do not have T2. We have T1. Ara, we have. Ara, ara, ara. We do not have. Tech not V2, we do not have. V1, we also do not have. So we have to calculate T2, R, V2, V1. These are the things that we are supposed to calculate. That's it.
we have to calculate this in order for us to calculate the change in entropy. So the question is, how can we calculate this? Remember, we are supposed to find T2 first, uh, R, V2, and V1. So it's just up to you which one is easier for you to determine first. All right, we are given the constants here. Uh, C, P, C, V, we can calculate R from there. Remember, R is the difference between uh, C, P, and C, V. We talked about this in our introduction. So C, P, 0 0.88 minus C, V, 0 0.63. And that is going to give us R for A. That is our gas constant. Your gas constant is going to be 0 0.25 uh, kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, per kilogram Kelvin. That's why we've got R there. All right. So we now have our R 0.25. All right. Let's move on to another part. So these are kilojoules. Let's move to another part and see. All right. Then what else do we need? T2, T, T2, V1, and V2. Which one can we find? Uh, T2, these we do not have volume. So it's going to be complicated. Because at two, we just have uh, the pressure there. We just have pressure. We do not have volume. We need also V2. All right, so that's we can calculate V1. Let's think of V1. Uh, first, we have got M. All right, let's just tick what we calculated. We calculated this. So like I said, let's think of V1. We have got P1, T1, the mass. So we can use our PV. PV is equal to MRT1. So there, we're going to calculate T1. So we are calculating T1 divided by MR here. So T1 is going to be P1, uh, V1 over MR. So that's P1 is what? 103,4 times V1. Guys, we do not have V1. What did I say I want to calculate? V1, not T1. Guys, guys, what happened here? I do want to calculate V1 here. I want to calculate this. So I'm supposed to divide by P1. I was wondering why does this not make sense? All right, that's M. The mass is given uh, 1,34 times R. We calculated this uh, 0 0.25 times T1, we have this 288. Everything over P1, that's 103,4. So that's it. We are going to obtain the volume uh, V1, which was going to be 0, 0,933 uh, cubic meters. So that is our V1. Okay, so V1 is now there. Uh, V1, we calculated this, 0 0.933 cubic meters. All right, what else? Uh, T2 and V2, which one is easier there? And how can we do that? Okay, so if we see we have got PV, so you can use PV to calculate what? This one. So from our P1, V1 to the exponent, because there's an there is an N, the index of compression there, 1,2. So we have to use to the exponent of N. I talked about this also in our introduction that we are going to use with N. And also manipulating these to find V2. Guys, we talked about this. Said here, we're just going to divide by P2 both sides. All right. Let's just see, guys, here. That's P2 both sides. P2 both sides. So that I'm having... Uh, V2 to the exponent of N, which is equal to V1 to the exponent of N times P1 over P2. Remember what I said about removing this exponent by introducing the reciprocal of this exponent 1 over N. This will be affected to the exponent of 1 over N. This also to the exponent of 1 over N. So this automatically cancels here 1 over N and N cancels. So it will be V1 times uh, P1 over P2 to the exponent of 1 over N. Uh, nothing can be canceled there. I, we talked about this manipulation, guys. Still remember? So that is it. You're just going to substitute them. All the values we have. Everything that P V1, we have uh, P1, P2, 
P2, everything is there. So thus V2 is going to be V1. Uh, V1 here it was 0 0.933. All right. So guys, my board is now starting to drag. I do not know what's happening now. We'll see what's happening there. So I'm just going to substitute what we calculated. Remember, we calculated P1. In fact, P1 we're given 103,4. If I keep on going up and down, it's going to affect me. Uh, P2 we're also given 1,034. Uh, that was 1,034. All right, someone does not want to do this class. I can see because the way that is happening here, it's 1,034 to the exponent of one over one comma two. Remember our N, it was one comma two. So this gives us the volume directly. That's, we're gonna have our V2 there. So our V2 was going to be, uh, 0, 0.137 in cubic meters. All right, so we've got V2, uh, V2, V2. Let us just see. Let's hope we're going to win, guys. I just want to finish this question. That is my prayer right now. Uh, V2 is equal to what? Uh, 0, 0.137 cubic meters. Okay, we are having V2 now. We calculated this. So we are left with T2. All right, so what can we do to find T2? We can use our PV formula. Uh, remember PV, we've got P and V now. So P2, V2 is equal to MR T2. So that will enable us to calculate T2. So if I divide by MR, that's T2 is gonna be P2 V2 over MR. All right, so let us just substitute our values there. P2 already have 1,034 times V2, we calculated this 0 0.137. Everything over what? Uh, mass, the mass there, it was 1,34. So that's 1,34. they multiplying uh, by the mass. All right, sorry for that. Which was 1,34 times R. Remember, it was 0 0.25. All right, so that's our T2. All right. So by doing this, we were going to have something like 422,86 Kelvin. That's our T2 there. So with the T2 that we determined, we are having everything now. Everything is now there. These were the missing values. So in another question, this one is an advantage because it is talking about almost everything. How do you calculate it? So in another question, maybe it's only T2 which is missing. In another question, maybe it's only V2 that is missing in order for you to calculate the change in entropy. Maybe it's only V1. You work with how or what you're given. So after finding everything that is required on our formula, we can calculate the change in entropy by just substituting the mass. Uh, that's 1,34 into, in this case, our CV at constant volume. That's 0 0.6. Uh, three, the lean of T2 over T1. T2, we calculated this, 422.86 over T1, uh, which is 288. So that's it. Plus uh, R there, which is 0 0.25, and that will be lean V2 over V1, 0 0.137 over V1, which is 0 0.933. So that's it. Like this, we are going to obtain the change in entropy. The change in entropy. And that was going to give us a negative 0, uh, 0,318 uh, kilojoules per Kelvin. Remember also your units. The units are very, very important also at the end. So these are the typical questions that you just need. Like I said, this question, I bring it out because it had a lot of things that we need to calculate. But in another question, they might just give you everything. Maybe it's only T2 that is not there. You have to calculate it. Or maybe it's only V2, which is, ne which is not there. You have to calculate V2. Or maybe it's P2. You don't know what. You just have to work with what you're given. As long, you have to check, is it everything there on the formula first? Sometimes they give you everything because this question, when you are now answering full, uh, like uh, question papers, you are not going to have a question on its own on change of entropy like this. No, 
it will be given on the question of our normal guesses as they are. So maybe you've already calculated these before. The last question is just for you to calculate the change in entropy. You just put your formula, substitute your everything. Maybe you calculated all these values before because under exam, it's not going to be only this change in entropy. They will ask you these one, calculate this. You see all this, that's a full question now. Then at the end, they will ask you to calculate the change in entropy. So that's how they ask these questions. So just have to revise as much questions as we can uh, for this to be well understood and also past exam papers that can make sure to understand more. But for now, that's it till we meet again.